Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having us back to review the Street Law Project. We're delighted to be here. Um, I'm Siobhan Cullen, and this is Brian Heverin. We're both from uh, the, the lead institution, Letterkenny Institute of Technology. Our partners, who are NUI Galway and Trinity, uh, uh, have very much collaborated in this. They've entrusted the review uh, to ourselves uh, today because they were busy teaching. Um, to, to give you an overview of what street law is, uh, this is essentially... Uh, law students, third level law students, uh, going out to the community, but in particular to secondary schools and teaching law. Uh, so they're teaching law uh, currently to TY students um, in, in secondary schools um, uh, in, in all three of the areas, in Donegal, uh, in Galway, uh, and here in Dublin. Uh, so it's a, a type of community legal education um, and um, uh, we've targeted uh, second level uh, students in particular um, uh, with what is now uh, an accredited module. Whilst it has been done before, uh, street law exists internationally. This is the first time it's been done in Ireland at undergraduate level uh, and as an accredited module, because very often these kind of pro bono law projects would be extracurricular. They would be voluntary things that students might do, uh, whereas this is an accredited module at 10 credits uh, towards uh, their degree. Uh, and uh, all the lessons are made available uh, and are open source available on a website and there's a permanent repository then of the, the lesson plans made available for all future uh, street law users. So that's what street law is. I'm going to move on to tell you what we've done uh, to date. Um, I suppose we've, we've consulted extensively both with our, our, our partners and also with our consultants. We have two consultants on this project. One, uh, the Law Society of Ireland, um, who in fact run street law, uh, albeit at post-grad level and, and extracurricular. And also Georgetown Law School in Washington, who are the founders of street law, have worked closely with us in developing this. We've also looked at various international uh, models. And we spent a lot of time researching this. We wanted to create a street law model that is uniquely Irish um, uh, and we um, we're, we're happy that we've done that one of the steps was to to create a logo uh, so um, quite a lot of work went into that we wanted it to uh, impact and we wanted it to um, demonstrate that this was an Irish street law uh, model um, and uh, the, the students wear the t-shirts with the logo when they go out to the schools. Uh, so it's a very uh, visual uh, representation uh, of, of this street law model. Uh, we've also registered streetlaw.ie and uh, this is where the lesson plans are made available and where uh, the, the blog uh, that, that we'll mention later uh, is used uh, for students to interact. Interestingly, um, that was developed by the computing students in LYIT as part of a project that they worked on, um, and they received a special purpose award in uh, industry studies uh, for developing our street law website. Uh, so we, we liked the fact that there was uh, some additional collaboration there. Um, last semester, so before Christmas, we piloted street law, by which I mean it wasn't an accredited module. Students did it voluntarily, um, extracurricular and um, we use that pilot to inform the development of, of the module. Um, the uh, the, the uh, teaching uh, environment is Blackboard, uh, which is uh, being used as well as the website to, to, hold, to use uh, the digital resources. So um, those students uh, will be eligible for a special purpose award in civic engagement, but they essentially did it extracurricular. Um, and, we wanted to develop a uniquely Irish brand, uh, and I suppose that kind of happens by itself with street law, because it's Irish law they're teaching, so there can't be uh, any other way of doing it. It's quite emancipatory in the sense that you go into the schools and you ask the students which areas of law they'd like to learn about. So it's almost like sort of law for teenagers, essentially, in terms of the areas that they've picked. Um, and those lesson plans have now been uh, uh, researched, uh, prepared, uh, drafted by the students who work in teams on this under our supervision and mentorship and they're now available uh, on the website. It's been really, really positively received, uh, I have to say. Our sense is uh, that um, 
uh, lots and lots of schools would like to do, uh, do it. Um, th there's been a great demand. Um, there has been ongoing evaluation uh, by our students, by the second level pupils, um, who've all completed questionnaires at the conclusion of the pilot, as have the teachers. And we've used that to uh, inform the development of the module. Um, but certainly uh, our take on it is that we could have um, uh, we could have delivered street law in double the number of schools at the very least than we have um, uh, uh, been able to uh, to date. Um, so the module has now been accredited and validated by external panel. And um, we, as I say, we've used the feedback uh, in order to inform that and the assessment um, is largely based on reflection, but has been uh, rigorously uh, examined uh, uh, by the external panel. Um, reflection, exit interviews, uh, and ongoing supervision in, in seminar. Um, the other things that we've done is that we've created uh, resource packs, uh, which are sort of physically available as well as uh, what's available on the website, um, and a, a bespoke uh, handbook for, uh, for, for street law. Um, the orientation program, which was, was a big event um, in terms of this, the, the collaborative nature of this product. product. Um, so this happened in January in, in Letterkenny, um, and our collaborating partners attended with all of their students. So the great thing was we had students from Letterkenny, from Trinity and Galway, all being trained together for three days over a weekend by the Georgetown uh, trainers who came, as did the Law Society of Ireland. And they brought uh, their own street law graduates who who have uh, a delivered street law. Uh, so it, it was a fantastic event, um, and it was great to see the students working together uh, from uh, the three different institutions. Uh, and that basically was their training to go out and deliver street law in the schools. Um, so uh, as we speak, we are delivering street law in four schools in Donegal. And, um, this will culminate in a mock trial, which we've scheduled for the 13th of March, where the schools will compete with each other. We'll bring them to the college because we think there's a, a positive aspect to bringing the secondary school students to the college, uh, and they'll compete in a mock trial, which our students are training them uh, for currently. Um, in terms of what's happening in the two partnering um, institutions, they are actually piloting street law this semester. So they've taken our, um, our model, our schedule that we used in our pilot, and we, we've shared that, um, uh, and uh, they're piloting uh, now as we speak, um, and uh, with a view to then um, comparing uh, the, the, the pilot and our accredited module and refining the whole thing going forward. Um, so that's, um, I suppose, in a nutshell, uh, what we've done to date. I'm now going to pass you on to Brona uh, to talk about the impact and evaluation. Hi, good afternoon. And Siobhan has briefly mentioned the evaluation, and we're very conscious of making sure that uh, the street law that we develop fits the Irish model, as it were. So we're, we've put in evaluation at loads of different stages. So the first one that we put in is for our own students themselves. So effectively the students, we're very lucky, it's kind of a competitive process quite simply because more of them want to do it than we have places available. So that, I suppose, made sure that we have interested students taking up the street law module now as it is. But even in the pilot, the same thing, there were more of them wanted to do it than we could facilitate. But notwithstanding that, at the start of their orientation, so they come together for the first time for this three-day block when they're trained up to teach street law. And at the start of that, the first thing we've done with them is they complete, before they do anything at all, a pre-orientation questionnaire. And its purpose is essentially to assess their context. So you're looking at what kind of experience they bring to it. Have they ever taught anything before? Because remember, these are law students. Part of their training is certainly not teaching. But you'd be surprised at how much good exposure they've had, whether it's in youth groups or sports clubs, or indeed just that they've, you know, they've done things themselves where they got the benefit of it and they want to share that again. But it's a really good, um, I suppose, icebreaker to see where they're coming from with that. So you're looking at their experience, but you're also looking at their expectation. What are they expecting from street law? And it's, they, they know about street law and it's got great, I suppose, become a great buzzword already in the short time that we've been around it. And so that in itself sells it, so they, but you want to check that they're real, that they know what it's really involved. And a lot of them are on the civic engagement bent, which is lovely, as in they're all into public legal education and so on. But I think that's probably because so far it's, you know, we've been able to offer it only in limited supply, and that obviously gets people who are maybe more civic orientated than others. We do a similar 
survey at the end. Sorry, the last part of that questionnaire also asked them, how would they go in and teach a topic? And we pick something really simple like murder. If they were to go in and teach second levels or a group who knew nothing about it, how would they set it up? And remember, they're coming from a very academic mood where they're getting, if they're getting taught murder it is, and the law says, and it does this, and this case said this, and this, you know, it's all about how it was held and so on. So to change, they're basically inducted to the interactive methodology over that weekend where they learn that it's going to be teaching by doing. It's not going to be delivery of information. It's going to be, we'll do activities and generate information and what should the law be? So th at the end of the weekend, even for themselves, they have to redo that and it's, it, it, to be honest, it's really good evidence of the learning over a three-day block, how much do they change themselves? Because they get more out of it, they learn. So th I suppose they're converts by the end of the weekend and they know that you, know, you can actually teach a really hard legal topic to people who know no law relatively easily. Okay? So that's for our third level students who are going out. That's initially to set them up for the programme. During the delivery of the, the programme, as Siobhan said, at the moment we're delivering it with the TY pupils. So for them, we want to make sure that they're as engaged as possible. So we assess them in two different ways. And more, the first one is, is at the start of it, which we've just done for the current version, is we do a digital survey. And that's really for us to identify the whole, to, well, I suppose to tap into that idea that they're all very digitally literate. And it's to check that and to see where they're most digitally friendly and what they like. Scarily, unfortunately, what they really like is YouTube. So that's going to up the ante for us because it means instead of Snapchat is next best, which is slightly less scary. But the, you know, and that's the current cohort of them. And then Facebook comes down the line. Obviously, we were much more wordy and we prefer not to be putting pictures and videos of ourselves up there. The good part is, is they're probably not so afraid of that, so we can use them, and that's what we're going to have to do looking forward. Where we, Siobhan referred to our website, at the moment it's very much, you know, d Word documents and facilitating, there's a blog and so on, but it's not as interactive as maybe they would like, and we're going to have to up the ante there. But hopefully our computing students will come back on board and facilitate us a little in that. I have to say, though, the irony of that is, is that they may love all these interactive mediums. Uh, part of that questionnaire asked them if you were, you know, if we provided training for any p aspect of digital interaction, what would you want? And they needed education on that. They want you to do it for them, but they're not so hot on it themselves, which makes me feel a little less afraid as well. At the end of the street law programme, they also complete a questionnaire, and theirs is very superficial. By that I mean it's about what did you learn, what legal things did you learn, did you like it, what, th what activities did you like best, did you like working in groups? And for the pilot, we've had that feedback, and the feedback was really, really positive. The depressing part of that might be that their ordinary day is so school textbook based, and they're not allowed that interaction. Now you can sort of understand it, because it would be hard to control you for every maths class that they were chatting with their neighbours and so on. But they really engage with it, and they love that level of interaction. And they all learnt lots, which is ultimately what we want. The third level students, at the end of each teaching session, we had them in the pilot complete an evaluation form. Now, the purpose of that was to really get them thinking. The third level students, what we want them to develop out of this is transferable skills. And one of the key transferable skills is this ability to learn, relearn, ad infinitum, so that they go out as lifelong learners. So what they're really, we're trying to get them to do, in addition to the whole teaching element, is to look back and assess their performance and learn what they can do about it to make it better. So their evaluation form was much more directed at developing those re reflective skills, so that they would look back at what was good, why was it good, and how I can reinforce that, pick out maybe the weaknesses and how they can undo those and try and work around them the next time out. But ideally, again, to make them, it's lifelong learning skills we're trying to imbue, embed in them, and that's what their evaluations are primarily about. And as Siobhan said, in the assessed module, reflection will form part of their actual assessment. So we're just kind of trying to set up the structures to help them out on that. Um, we, we're also very fortunate, and we have Tilly here today. She's doing a uh, Master's by Research Evaluation of Street Law, so she's standing in the wings watching everybody do all of this. Two minutes, okay. I'm going to start flying now, sadly. Um, it, 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 so we have the product of that down the line, which is great. We've got through academic accreditation, which was also great. Our partner institutions have yet to do it, so we wait to see how they'll get on. Wait, let's see the next slide. National impact. I'm going to fly over this because a lot of this is what Siobhan has already said. It's an extension of that. Basically, the more the merrier. Everybody we have connected with along the way has pretty much wanted more of it. Now, that's going to pose its own challenges in terms of management. I mean, we'd love to have every student going out to do it. Every school would love to have it. But there's quality control and there's actual facilitation of it, and that will be a challenge. But certainly, what we want to do is continue that. We want to, I suppose, specifically move out. We we're delivering to transition year students because they were a very ideal target. It fits a niche where they're looking for that kind of civic uh, citizenship and all of that kind of information. They have the time out to learn about that. But we equally want to try and access the more marginalised groups in schools, and we've had a good demand from, we we're going to do a, an outreach session this term with early school completion leavers to try and see about filling those kind of gaps as well, because street law is about 
bringing law to the, those less likely to receive it otherwise. So in terms of our collaboration, we want to continue in the vein we're on, but also extend it to include those kind of groups. Our website, Siobhan, has um, already alluded to, and I'll do a quick click on it before we're out of here. One of the big things about street law is it's about sharing. So that sharing is us putting everything out there that anybody who wants to run it can have it. But the lovely thing about it is, is that people who've done street law are fantastic at coming back. Of the, when we had the orientation in January, we had people from the states who came voluntarily to participate to spread the word. And that's a big thing about street law. They're so um, contagious by it that they feel that they have to spread it and put everybody, uh, everybody else on the same wavelength. And again, it's coming back to the overall policy agenda that we're sitting in, that it, it, in the campus engage situation where we want our students to be more involved and not just solely academic. And I am flying on to the last slide to keep to my time. They, I click on the website if you want, but my, I'll go forward to the last one is, effectively what we want to create are, you of your teaching heroes, we want to create street law heroes so that anybody who knows about street law is converted to it, sees the merit in it, and wants to take it to wherever forum they can use it. And I have to say, one of the issues, or not issues, one of the comments that came from our academic accreditation was that this could be multidisciplinary, and that's for sure. This whole approach could be taken to other disciplines, and we could work with other disciplines in this. There's some, in the States, there are some who do it with their um, social care units, where they provide that type of interaction as well. But certainly that's um, what we want to create in terms of long-term sustainability, if people are converted to it, we think they will spread the word. And ultimately, through that, they will build belief, capacity, and community. Okay, thank you very much. And sorry for the last bit on speed. Oh, okay. <laughs>